So Jonathan, you, you said you'd presented to some of the other book clubs. So you, which, which um, things uh, have you been involved the, with? Tidy modeling with R. Um, I was involved in the first cohort for a while uh, before uh, I just graduated with my bachelor's uh, right. in May. So I was involved with it until I got to exam period and could not keep up with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was fun. Right. Cool. Yeah, we because uh, uh, sorry, I mean we. It's just that we're like we're like a few chapters from the end of this club yeah. so it's a, a, a curious time to join us but um, yeah, yeah I, uh, i've been thanks. following along uh i just i read the modules one oh, last nice. week but i had another meeting so i couldn't uh couldn't come so have you have you used shiny much then i uh, yeah um, a fair bit. I did my uh, senior thesis with uh, Shiny and R and stuff, so. Cool, cool. Well, I've just spent two days debugging something that turned out I could just change the version of package that I was using and it fixed itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's lots you can learn, but sometimes you... <laughs> oh. Sometimes, Sometimes the frustrations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. But yes. Um. So this is towards the end of the Master in Chinese book club. Hopefully, someone will run another cohort. Someone did contact me about whether there would be another cohort for mm -hmm. Master in Chinese. Um. If there is, I don't think I'll be involved with it. But um. Uh. I am keen to run other shiny book clubs and there's been quite a bit of interest in the engineering shiny book so yeah. i'm Amazing. trying to arrange for that to kick off towards the end of august um but the the problem we the problem we have um in in europe at least um is that the, there's somewhat fewer people who are interested in joining the book clubs than there is if you combine America and, and Europe and Africa together. Um, and also, like all the American book clubs, if they're in the evenings, it means they're at like two and three in the morning for us. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're a bit difficult. But, but given that the, the videos are recorded, um, I think we can probably do a... A, a, a kind of book club that's half in Europe and half in America mm -hmm. um, and you know watch the YouTube videos if if you miss one because you know because you have to sleep um, so I, I'm, I'm keen to do that because the, the, the problem with the, the next book that I'm planning to do for Shiny is that it's it's not really an introductory book and um, yeah, so it kind of requires a little bit of it, quite a lot of shiny knowledge to 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 set up. So I, I think that by maximizing how many people join the cohort is the best way of doing it. I think. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, I just waffle for t ten minutes until we get enough people in the the room. So there's five of us so far. Um, we might as well talk in general about the the chapter first before you do your your talk if you like um so um so this week it's about packages um and the the past couple of weeks we've talked about um functions and we've talked about modules and how you can use them to decompose a i mean it's quite possible to write a shiny app in a single file but it becomes more and more difficult to manage, um, you know, finding which line of code you need to change and things like that. So, you know, functions and modules are a way of decomposing a, an app into more. I'm trying not to say modules make it more modular um, into smaller components that are easier to manage. Packages, it's slightly different, though, it seems to me the the like sp splitting an app, not splitting, defining an app in a package 
is a different mindset. It's like the purpose of doing it is to make additional tools available to you that wouldn't necessarily be available. Um, but yeah, I don't know. How, how did you find this chapter? Anyone? Um, I found it interesting the way that uh, Hadley like presented it in the sense of I built a package for Shiny to kind of add more functionality, I guess, like that you can use, you know, um, UI components and stuff. Um, so to me, I, I personally never quite understood the um, package and app itself, which I get a little bit more now in terms of like you specifically know your um, what packages are going to be using, like whether that's Shiny JS or Tidyverse or whatever, um, you have those listed in the description file. And I think it makes kind of sense to like easily share the app itself. Um, so I, I liked that perspective of it, I guess. Okay, cool, cool. I think we might as well start to be honest because I mean, there's the, admittedly there's only five participants here at the moment. Some might join, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, we might as well just get going, I guess. Um, thanks. So to, today, uh, Jonathan's talking about packages. Um, and great, do you want to share your screen or whatever yeah. you want to do? Um, so I just have the book down website up. Um, so R for data science, github.io. Um, and packages, they're just, you know, generally a lightweight set of conventions um, that Hadley says unlock uh, useful tools and workflows. Um, and so kind of diving into like an over, overview of like a package structure, um, it contains a description file, which has the metadata. Uh, so the package name, who wrote it, um, if you have like a one line blurb about it, um, that's all kind of in the description file as well as um, the imports so what packages your package depends on. Uh, so like uh, Tidyverse might depend on dplyr, right? Because it loads dplyr. Um, dplyr might depend on tidyr, for example, whatever. Um, so those imports, the packages that your package uses are in the description file. There's also an R directory um, where all your R files live, so just regular function definitions or variables. Um, packages can also contain data directories, which holds like reference data sets, uh, tests for unit testing, which um, is useful for as you add new features, you want to make sure you, you don't break anything. So you can have these tests that kind of snapshot your code and you expect a certain result. And as long as they pass, you can assume that you didn't break anything, uh, theoretically at least. Um, they can also have a vignettes directory, which is uh, like long form documentation. Um, and they have a lot more. Highly recommend uh, their Hadley and Jenny Bryan's book, uh, Our Packages. Super great. Um, yeah, any questions with that, I guess? Uh, not particularly, nothing in the chat, at least. Um, are, you, are you happy for us to just ask questions? Yeah. Uh, just yeah, yeah. put in whenever. Uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's that seems like a a, a, a good overall um, overview of packages. Yeah. So in in general, the benefits of a package, at least you know, outlined in this uh, chapter, are to easily share your work, and they provide a common like organizational structure for your code, uh, and offer some cool tools to load in and launch your shiny applications. And um, we'll take a look at those uh, later on. But uh, that's the main benefit that we kind of talked about a little bit already. Um, so how do you do this? Um, you can convert an existing app um, in a few steps. The first is uh, using the, the use this package, um, which is basically like a, a package for developer tools, you can edit your R environment, you can create a package, you can create uh, R files, etc. Um, so there's this function called create package, you define a path. So where do you want to put it maybe on your desktop? 
uh, and it'll create a package directory, um, which is an RStudio project, and it'll have uh, the description file kind of in there and the basic skeleton for an R package that, that I mentioned a little bit ago. Um, so you will then, if you call library at the top of your, your Shiny application or require, you'll remove those and you will use this uh, use package uh, name. Uh, so put in the package name and that'll add that package to the description file. Uh, so if your Shiny app uses dplyr for some filtering of a, of a data set, um, you would remove the library dplyr at the top of your app and you would use, uh, use this use package dplyr um, to add it to your description. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, if your app uses modules, you can place related ones within individual .r files. So kind of how uh, Hadley mentioned last week that you have an R directory where you place the like histogram UI and histogram server. Uh, it's the same, same general idea here. You use the use underscore R function, which will create an R directory if it doesn't already exist. Um, and within it, it will uh, create a file.r, so in this case, module-category.r. You could do histogram, uh, and it'll create a histogram.r file where you would put any modules uh, in. And then lastly, you would wrap the core app uh, inside a function and place that within a .r file. So this is just a simple uh, greeting app that, that I came up with um, where you define a user interface with a text input and a text output. You're defining the server-side logic to just say, hello, uh, name, basically. Uh, and you will run the application. So it's wrapped in a function call. Um, hello, Kat. Uh, it's wrapped in a function call. So when you um, go through and run the application, you can just call greeting app, uh, and you'll see the Shiny application pop up. Um, to do that, you would use this DevTools load all function, which will basically source all your R files, so your modules, your, your greeting app in this case, um, and will load the package. So all you have to do is just type greeting app and, and you'll say hello to your package. Um, does that make sense? Do you have questions with that? Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but uh, so, so everything is going into uh, all all the source code associated with the app is going into us into R into the directory R within your your yes. package. Correct. Um, and so this this means that you can presumably this means that you can define multiple different apps within the same package. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, does it make it like, I don't know, because when I, when I, um, but this also, this also means that you can, um, you can, associate an app with a package even when that package is sorry when the app isn't necessarily the main purpose for the package so like if you've got a um, a, a package for analyzing a particular type of data mm -hmm. um, you can you can add in a shiny app that exists solely to kind of illustrate how to use that package yes rather than for deployment to the world exactly um, and i'll show an example of that actually all right okay cool cool with with my package um but just to kind of show you know this is an r studio project used with create package um i've called it i've called the package greeting app you can see um the description file my cat is walking on my keyboard. You can see the description file has my information already in because I, I have that uh, preset. 
but you have a title, what does the package do? You can have a more detailed description. And so if I copy this, I'm going to call it use this, use R, and I'm gonna say greeting app, and that will create this .r file, which is now living inside my R directory. And I'm gonna paste that app. So by pasting that app, um, I can now call, for example, dev tools load all, and it'll load greeting app. So it sources this R file. And now if I call a greeting app, we should get an error. And that's because it doesn't recognize the function fluid page. So the one kind of modification you may have to do is specifically namespace where functions are coming from. So fluid page comes from the shiny package. So we can use this uh, shiny colon colon notation to specify that we're coming from the shiny package use this uh, function. So we're doing that um, for these different functions uh, that are from the shiny package. Does that make sense so far? So now because I've included this this package here, I'm going to use call use this use package shiny. And now we'll add shiny to the description file. So if we look here, we now see that imports, uh, it imports the shiny package. Um, Hadley mentioned that if you're doing something like this, you may want to import it uh, for the whole package so you don't have to use this notation. Uh, this is a simple example, so I'm, I'm not gonna do that here, but if we call dev tools load all again, it will reload. And now if we call greeting app, we should see our app appear. So if we change our name, um, we see our app and it's part of our uh, package basically. So if I put this up on GitHub or on CRAN, uh, I could easily share it with you and, and you'd be able to, to see it like that. Um, so does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions with that? Um, sorry. Yes. Sorry. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Um, I will move on to the next uh, section, I guess. Um, just kind of talking about uh, shiny surveys, which is a shameless plug for a package that I wrote. Um, it provides easy to use minimal code for creating and deploying surveys in shiny. Um, so it just released the latest version on CRAN uh, yesterday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, so you can install it like this and demo survey that you might make would look something like this. Um, what is your favorite food? Mine is sushi. Click submit and you can define what happens upon submit. So as you mentioned, uh, Rest, you can have a demo survey, which is um, showing what uh, an example of what you can do with my package. So my package um, is not, um, so this is a description file for my package. Um, I guess this is the RStudio project. And here is everything I have. So I have documentation, I have news, et cetera. So there's a lot of stuff, um, tests, vignettes that uh, I encourage you to look at Hadley and Jenny Bryan's uh, book uh, our packages if you want to learn more about, but we'll focus on the R directory for now. So this R directory contains um, basically different um, function definitions. So how I am, uh, these are documentations for the different functions, but it's basically, um, you know, normal R code uh, written for creating, um, just general, you know, stuff, I guess. So you can see that I use this shiny um, colon colon thing a lot. So when you create a survey, you are including the JavaScript file that I wrote. You're including uh, the saving data JavaScript file. Um, you're defining a div, so a divider for HTML. 
um, for a, of a class survey so we can style it appropriately. Um, and so it's basically just a bunch of different R code that works uh, within the server and the user interface component. And so you can create an app um, broadly using um, a specific structure. So I'm just going to um, copy and paste a question, uh, which is just a data frame. You ask the question, what's your favorite food? Um, an optional placeholder. So if I put um, ice cream here, that would uh, appear as a placeholder in a text input, which we're defining like this. I'm giving the question an input ID. So just like input dollar sign favorite food. Um, these are some more advanced features dealing with basically conditionals. So does this question only appear if something else shows up or someone answers a different question in a certain way? Um, but basically, this actually goes up right here. Um, I define a question and then I can use from the Shiny Surveys package uh, the survey output function where I pass in just the question data frame. And on the server side, I have this render survey function. And that's all I need to do um, to create a, a working survey. So if I load my package um, and then I run this, we'll see a shiny application saying, what's your favorite food? We can see that ice cream is a placeholder here. Um, I'm going to write sushi again. And now I can hit submit. I've defined nothing, nothing happens when I click submit. Um, I can choose what happens using uh, observe event. So observe event and put submit. And then I might print out um, input favorite food. So what was my favorite food? So if I do that now in the console, we should see that my favorite food is sushi. Um, so that's just a uh, basic example of creating an app. And you can do something uh, with, I mentioned I have a demo survey function. So this demo survey function uses an internal data set of questions from uh, this uh, project I was part of uh, back in college. Wow, two whole months. Um, and uh, it just gives you an idea of type of survey that you can do. So it asks for your age, uh, I'm 21, your gender, highest level of education you attained, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can see that there are required questions here. So indicated by asterisk, so I can't submit until I answer all of these questions. Now I can submit and it'll tell, you know, thanks, you've, you've completed your first shiny survey, um, which is exciting, I guess. Um, not I guess it is, but so it, you can include a demo survey, which if you look in the um, source code for is really just the app that I made externally, but using a different set of questions. And I'm having uh, additional parameters. So I've defined the title, the description, and the theme is an argument that you pass into the demo survey function. Um, but again, this is just, you know, you wrap your app inside of a function and you can export it as part of a package. So this is how I share, like, you can see what you can do with my package called demo survey. Um, I guess in answer to your earlier comment, uh, Russ, and you can also, I've added a multi-page one. So if you want to see what a survey over multiple pages looks like, you can um, see this, keep going. Um, so it provides like a nice way to illustrate uh, what you have, I guess. Um, so do you have questions with that, with the package, kind of anything in general? Um, can I ask about, uh, oh, I think Robert's got a question in the chat. Hold on. Um, oh. Sorry, what's this? Uh, no, that was just more my point that I don't know when they finally changed it, but it used to be you would have to put your server and UI functions mm -hmm. into the inst um, and, then, and then call it within a function within your R folder um, so that it could then reference back to where the source file was was stored and then pick up that particular folder. And it was not user-friendly to say the least. 
um, and extremely difficult. So it's good to see that, that they've now changed it so that you can actually store um, the server and UI as a single function um, in the R folder and make it a lot easier to get to because putting it into the inst and then getting a hold of it was, it wasn't easy. It, it, it caused a fair bit of problems. And I do think I, I have seen um, that on GitHub before, so I think it still is an option, but- um, Don't I, use it. Don't yeah, use I, I haven't done it. This is, <laughs> this is what Hadley writes in his book, so <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think I wrote that like four and a half years ago. Okay. Um, mm. So yeah, it, no, no, it was, it, it was bad. Uh, it also made it almost impossible to actually pick up. Um, one of the main things that we had problems with was actually picking up uh, values in that and then feeding them back into so like even allowing things like download file or like select file on file system, um, the old inst uh, folder made it really difficult to actually feed that back in to get to, uh, to a variable to be able to select those things. So this looks like it should be a lot easier to use. Hmm. Okay. So, but um, do you still have to put things like uh, CSS files into inst and is, is, yes. Isn't that right? Yeah. So, so if you look at the, I guess, um, actual code for for creating the survey output. So, um, there is you can read the line. So, system file. Um, in this case, I'm using the SAS package to to convert from SAS to um, CSS but you read the line system file from which package. So I'm reading the SAS file from the Shiny Surveys package. Same thing for including JavaScript files, um, define the package and define the file. So if you look at the inst directory, um, these are my two JavaScript files and those are there. Um, so yeah. Anyone else uh, wants to join in? There's, uh, who's in the room? Um, has anyone here not uh, ever put an app in a package? I haven't. Um, I've made an app that is a package, but not like a shiny app that, like a you have a package and then include a shiny app in it. Um, right. But I think it's interesting. I see, I can see it being useful if like, for example, let's say your organization has like, you know, a particular style that they tend to stick to, or, you know, you want to, I think we talked about this in the module section of building maybe certain modules for, for doing certain things that are, you might want to use in a bunch of different apps. I think you know, you could have that as a as a as a package. Have have all the that functionality in package, and then you can show an example app of how to how to use that. Sure. Sorry, I was kind of rambling off a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's actually really useful when you work for a company and being able to like uh, create a ggplot theme and like storing like your company's color palette. Um, yeah, exactly. That that is actually very useful until you work for a company that uh, that their main color is blue and uh, the first five colors of the color palette are basically indistinguishable from each other, and I'm like, guys, what? This does not work. So then you get to pick your own. But I mean, I guess that's what happens when you work for a company that uh, that the word blue is uh, twice in their name. So. <laughs> I think it's really cool, um, Jonathan, that you, I like how you had an example, like your own examples already, which is, could be why you put, you know, pick this chapter, but no, yeah. it's, it's always nice to see when, when, you know, we can have a little more than just a, a basic demo app. Yeah. So um, can you, can you tell me about um, 
your a bit more about your package itself. So supposing I was to write, supposing I wanted to write a survey to send out to um, clients or colleagues or something like that, mm -hmm. and I'd want to store their results somewhere, would I, would I just use, would I, would I, um, deploy my own version of your package or would I pull in modules and things from within your package to use in an app that I write myself that, that has access to like my database or my yeah. email credentials or something. Yeah. So this is something that I've, I've uh, been working on for a um, few clients. I, I do some freelance work as well. Um, and I, have, I'm going to show a demo app that I just made for a friend um, asking about Avengers uh, ratings. So who do you think is the most influential Avenger? I'm not going to answer it now. Obviously, it's Iron Man. Um, but if you, um, it asks different questions, blah, 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 blah. But when you click submit, um, unbeknownst to the users here, which is why I haven't really shared this app, um, it writes to, um, a Google Sheet, so um, I will show the code, I guess, because that would probably be helpful. Um, so using, uh, Jenny Bryan has a wonderful like, vignette on non-interactive authentication for uh, Google Sheets and stuff. So basically using that workflow, um, I specify um, the I cache the auth token within the secret.secrets .secret directory of the Shiny app. Um, and when I publish it um, to uh, shinyapps.io, I can just include that auth token and then I can write the responses. So the latest version of uh, Shiny Surveys has a helper function called get survey data, which will, uh, it's now changed to the uh, camel case. But, um, it basically aggregates uh, all responses. So you don't have to do anything. Basically, it'll just get the data for you. Um, and so what I do is I just save it as um, a Google Sheet response, which I'm not gonna try to pull up because I'm gonna have to look through all my Google Sheets. But um, yeah, so you can, you can store it, uh, basically however you can store things in Shiny, um, in a SQL database, or I've used Google Sheets, you can, you can collect the responses um, and easily access them with the get survey data function, um, if that answers your question. Right. Um, so, so have you, um, have you, managed to get your package onto cram then yes uh yes. published Good. zero point or version 0 0.2.0 0 launched on sunday <laughs> got accepted on sunday well good stuff i've only managed to get past them once <laughs> it's easier on the second go around <laughs> That's and uh hadley and the rest of the users team put out a nice release version uh, use this release version, I think, um, and it'll create like a GitHub issues for you with like task lists of like, run this before you do this, run this mm. before you do this. Um, and that way you should theoretically only have to submit once. And, and I found great success with that. Um, so here's the, the link to the GitHub and it has the uh, CRAN information and everything else there for the Chinese service package. Cool, cool. Um, right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, does anyone else want to ask anything? What's this? Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm looking at the source code for your your package at the same time. Please, if you have any ideas, please. I'm I'm very open to learning and improving it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So it, um, um, had you written any packages before doing the, the, the Shiny app project as part of your, your degree? 
um, some packages, but my, my senior thesis was uh, really, I created three different packages, um, each for different kind of space. So I have one for interacting with GitHub's API, like in a user friendly mm -hmm. manner, I guess, like a wrapper around the GH package. Um, another one was for behavioral genetic modeling. Um, and this one was for behavioral data collection, I guess. Um, so I've had some experience, but um, yeah. All right. That's quite cool. Yeah, we have, um, uh, she's not here today. I, I think a couple of the people who've been attending the book club um, have been teaching Shiny as part of the um, uh, for, for particular universities. And um, yeah, it's getting more and more common for um, Shiny to be a part of, of, of a kind of computational statistics um, program, yeah. Um, but it's cool, it, it, I mean, God, yeah, no. I, 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 it, it was a, a good distance after I'd uh, graduated before I was publishing anything like this. It's really good. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, regarding the, the chapter, though, is there anything that you felt that, that, that could be improved? Is there anything that like um, where it felt like I, I don't quite understand why it's being suggested that I ought to do uh, th this process, given that you know I can all you know I can release an app, the app as it is. Um, is there? It, I don't know. It's, it's actually quite a quite a compact chapter, isn't it? And there's quite a lot of stuff in the R packages book that um that help out um yeah um, 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 um. cool cool well yeah no i don't know i mean i i'm happy to 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 cut it short today if you if you are um but yeah uh, thanks for taking us through the 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 chapter um yeah. so next week i'm i'm going to be talking about testing um and there's like five different levels at which um, the code within a Shiny app can be tested uh, that, that are mentioned in, in the Shiny book, at least. Um, um, so yeah, but um, putting things into this package structure is certainly kind of helpful for, for getting the testing infrastructure in place and like i've i've tried running it with because you can you can approximate a package structure by putting a lot of your code into a directory called r and by putting a description file in but you don't necessarily need to put in namespace and you don't necessarily need to take all your other code out of the top level and put it into r um, and test that will run fine but i found if Unless the package is installable, I couldn't do anything with like uh, code coverage tools and things like that. So um, yeah, being a bit more formal about structuring an app as a package is quite useful for you know making other development tools available to you. Um, yes, so we're going to be talking about testing next week. Um, cool. Right. Thanks everyone for for coming along and thanks. Jonathan for putting the presentation together. The, the 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 package looks really good though. It's really like professionally done. Cool. Yeah, right. Okay. Right Thanks. then everyone. I'll see you next week. See you later. Bye. Bye.